in an amazing team, the only argument we had had was about merging source code directly to the main development branch. Actually, this is not my first time in Singapore. I was here in January, and I really liked the place. Uh, and I was presenting a topic here about uh, iOS app security basics. Uh, and back then, I started a habit. Uh, every time I present a topic in a certain country, I want to introduce myself in the language of that country. And actually, last time, I introduced myself in Chinese, which sounded, Ni hao. What's your mate? What's your chong Boland? And this time I would like to add another language to my list, and it will be Bahasa Malayam. Hello, nama saya mate. Saya berasal dari Poland. And for those of you who don't speak any of those languages, hi, my name is Mate, and I come from Poland. And if you want to know where the Poland is, it's a country uh, in Europe. It borders with Germany. Uh, and it takes around 50, uh, hours, 15 hours by an airplane to get here to Singapore. I, also, I am also an iOS programmer. And uh, I run a blog with my friends. It's called Swifting.io. And today, I would like to... Uh, present you the importance of uh, code review. Why is that? Uh, it is because I've done hundreds of reviews for the past uh, years, and I have a bit of experience with that. And it's just important. And you'll, uh, we'll get to the point why it's important for me. I would like to start uh, this presentation with a real life example of reviews. Uh, in Poland, uh, I uh, started, uh, I am interested in music, so in Poland, uh, it connected me with uh, my friends. I have a band over there, and it's called Admin Admin, you know, just like a usual username and password to the majority of informatics <laughs> systems. Uh, and before, uh, this is a picture showing uh, our band on one of the performances. But of course, uh, before every performance, musicians uh, rehearse their, uh, their performances, right? Their pieces of music. So uh, to let you experience better what I mean, I will just uh, bring out my instrument. And this is what actually uh, musicians do before, uh, before performances, they go to the place of the rehearsal on a certain hour, they pick up their instruments, they attach some fancy, uh, some fancy equip pieces of equipment. This actually is a tuner, so I will try to tune it up. I hope it will take less than 30 minutes. Maybe. So actually, rehearsing for musicians is uh, quite important because they have to know that uh, their pieces of the, the, the sound that goes from their instrument actually creates a perfect harmony. They also uh, they also try to oh no, come on, man. They also try to assess some areas of uh, for improvements for in their play. It's actually hard to tune it and speak simultaneously. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't prepared for that. I should have done it before the presentation. Cool, so uh, let's say it's more or less in tune. Uh, so uh, musicians just go to the place of the rehearsal. They sit in a perfect circle so that everyone sees each other's faces and can hear each other's instruments. And once they're ready, they just start to play, right?
yeah, let's say it was supposed to be more or less like this. So uh, actually, musicians during their rehearsals review their music. They try to point out places in a play that are good enough and they point out places that should be improved. Yeah, I will practice even more before next performance. So, what you, uh, look what you were just able to do. You were able to review my piece of music, which wasn't good enough. So, uh, I can gather your feedback after the presentation, but I know that I uh, should practice more before next uh, performance. Uh, so, actually, musicians review their work, rehearse their work, uh, just as programmers should review their code, right? Uh, yeah, and this is Yuku. So we should review code, but uh, what actually is a code review? So code review is a process of finding and fixing uh, mistakes overlooked during an initial phase of development, of software development. It's intended to enhance quality of the source code and to improve skills of each individual in a development team. Uh, I, we can distinguish three types of uh, code reviews. First of uh, them is per programming, and actually this is uh, this is the type of code reviews we actually do at uh, the place I work at the moment, and I pair usually with Tai, who is over there. Tai, you can wave your hand if you're brave. Cool. I work with him, and it's a really nice experience because we can share our ideas. We can uh, discuss the code we are currently developing, and we can uh, bring to the source code base as, uh, best uh, everything best that we uh, can, right? And uh, it is uh, it looks like that we have uh, one computer, two sets of keyboard and mouse, and we just uh, switch in purse and develop source code. And we are reviewing our work because we can point out. Uh, some places that need more work and what we can we can discuss uh, everything we do. So there is also a formal inspection, another type of code review. And formal inspection usually uh, uses a uh, an online tool that can display differences provided to the source code. So uh, we can attach comments to every place in the code. We can uh, discuss it also with other team members and they can uh, share their thoughts about our work. And another type of uh, code review uh, is something that I like, uh, I call show me your code review. And it happens when somebody has a problem in a team and it comes, uh, uh, he or she, they come to me and they say, uh, you know, Mati, I don't know how to solve that problem. And we discuss it a little bit and then I just tell them, yeah, you know what, just show me your code. So I just go to their uh, computer, they uh, display their code, and I can look through it and uh, review their work, point out some uh, ideas for improvements and solutions to their problems. There are three important aspects connected to code reviews, and those are checklists, ego effect, and positive culture. And those are very important when introducing uh, such uh, processes like code review in your workplace, at your workplace. So checklists. Uh, you know, I like music. Uh, uh, maybe one day I will become a musician. And musicians before performances tend to uh, have high demands for organizers of the concert. So for example, when, uh, I don't know, Michael Jackson, if Michael Jackson came to Singapore to play a concert, probably he would demand, uh, I don't know, uh, some fancy uh, pieces of furniture on the backstage, drinks and uh, nice ladies, whatever, right? So high demands uh, are something that uh, musicians want to have uh, before concerts. And actually, there was the one band that started those high demands uh, back then, but for different reasons. So uh, there was this band who 
before every con which before every concert uh, would give a checklist to the organizers of things that should be uh, on the backstage. And this checklist contained very different crazy stuff. For example, somewhere at the uh, bottom of the list, would, uh, uh, the, one of the items would say that put a bowl full of uh, red candies somewhere here on the backstage and give, I don't know, maybe a poster of Michael Jackson somewhere on the left on the backstage. And only when the, uh, when the when musicians entered the backstage and was able to see all of those uh, items on the backstage, they uh, knew that somebody went through, uh, somebody did the effort of going through all of the items on the list. And this list actually contained some uh, some tasks that related to security, because this list was meant to secure the backstage for a band. And actually, uh, programmers can also be secured with this checklist when doing some code reviews, because checklists contain uh, items that should be checked during a review. Another important aspect of code review is ego effect. And this is something that drives us to write as best code as we possibly can, because uh, when we know that somebody will be looking at our code, we will just write good code. No shitty code will happen. And uh, we should have a positive culture in a company. And positive culture of code review means that finding mistakes is welcomed positively, and nobody is punished for doing either doing a mistake or finding a mistake. But positive culture means also that we can prize our peers for a job well done. If at our place, when Ty writes good code, I will just say, wow, mate, this was an amazing piece of code. We should be solving those kinds of problems in that way from now on. And this is a positive culture of code review. So how to introduce those processes at work? Uh, I am an electronics and telecommunications graduate. And when I started iOS development a few years ago, I didn't know what unit testing and code reviews were, because those are subjects that are not taught uh, during my field of study. And uh, unit tests at my workplace uh, were looked like that. We had an Excel file. And we just copy and paste it uh, QAs. Uh, quality assurance testers uh, test cases. We run through them manually, filled in Excel uh, sheet, and yeah, those are our unit tests. But we knew at that time that we were lacking some experience in area of unit testing. So we invited an external trainer to teach us how to do unit testing properly. And after that training, I felt very secure. I knew how to unit test properly. And it paid off for me in the future. Because uh, one day I received a coding task from, a, from one of the companies I was applying for a job. And uh, the coding task said that I should develop an application that uh, has this functionality X. And I would get extra points for writing some unit tests. But the uh, main, uh, the most surprising thing about this coding task was that I was supposed to send the results back via a pull request. And at that time, it was something, for me, it was something right, like, pull what? What's a pull request? And for those of you who uh, use Gitflow, it's obvious. Uh, when you are uh, using Git repository, you can adhere to something called Gitflow. And Gitflow assumes that you have the main development branch, you uh, apply some commits with every piece of work you do over there, but you can also have per, uh, per feature functionality branches. So you just diverge from the main branch. You create, you uh, commit your work on a certain feature on this, this branch. And once you think your job is ready, you create a pull request. And this actually is a call for your colleagues to review your work. And they can use such tools as GitHub to comment your work, to point out some 
pieces that can be improved, or they can use this tool to say that your job is so cool that you don't have to do anything. But sometimes you have to uh, work again, rework your work, <laughs> uh, commit some, uh, some pieces of code, and somebody finally approves, approves your uh, pull request, and it can be merged to the main development branch. And back then, it, it felt really good to me. Because I, uh, during uh, this pull request and, co and this uh, coding task, I gathered a lot of feedback about my code and uh, a lot of experience. So I created a vision that I want to share with uh, developers around the world, whenever I am, wherever I am. So uh, I think that world would be a better place if every software developer used unit testing and code review. And actually, if iOS develop in iOS development, those two were a standard, not an opt-in feature. And I wanted to introduce code review to my work as well, to my team, because uh, we didn't have such uh, processes. Unfortunately, when you want to introduce your vision, your dream to uh, your team members, you will find some obstacles, especially from project managers. So I went to my project manager, and I said, I want to do this code review thing. But he answered that, no, no, Mati, you know. We have only three months and three developers to deliver this product, right? This is a usual, it was a usual estimate at my previous workplace. Uh, OK, PM, but you know, we can just have one hour for code review, and we'll avoid uh, searching a bug for one week. Okay, but then he answered, no, Mati, you know, <laughs> we only have fire and forget projects. And uh, this uh, slogan for us me meant that uh, we, once we ship our products, we never get back to the source code. So there is no need for code reviews, and of course not for unit testing, right? Uh, we did a lot of conferencing apps, so those were one event. Uh, Long one, uh, the those were applications that were used for one or two days. I worked for a pharmaceutical company, by the way. <laughs> but I replied that we should perceive those projects as review and learn because we can gather feedback about our code and we can uh, we can apply solutions to certain problems in next projects, right? Like uh, right. But, of course, the PM would answer that there is no time for doing it. I would say, there's no try. We just should do it. Just do it, like Nike uh, adverts used to say. But, of course, th it takes too much time, the PM replies. But it's really 60 minutes for a code review too much. Is it too long? Really, do you know how much it takes to deliver, to deliver a drug to the shelves of the pharmacy? From a molecule, from the time it is invented, to the time uh, it is available for patients. Is it one year? Three years? Actually, on average, it takes 10 years for a drug to be available for patients, for people to be used. And it's because every drug is a subject to clinical trials. There is uh, an entity in the US called FDA, Food and Drug Administration. And it has some regulations for drugs. Every drug has to be tested that their properties don't harm uh, other people, that uh, drug actually cures people. And we have three clinical uh, phases. Uh, three phases of clinical trials, and each of them takes uh, a few years. So this is why this process is so long. And actually, also the software that is used in manufacturing of those drugs and in clinical trials needs to be validated. Software validation is the process of assessing uh, pieces of code, and uh, this process assumes that you need testing and code reviews are performed during the development of the source code. This is why uh, s 
code reviews and unit testing is an important subject for pharmaceutical companies as well. So I was talking about this uh, FDA company, uh, sorry, FDA uh, entity in the US, and actually there is another, uh, there was one company uh, in the US that had problems with their regulations. Uh, it was called 23andMe, and they produced DNA collection kits. Actually, when they kicked off their business, they had to cease selling those DNA collection kits because they w wasn't able to fulfill some regulations. Uh, and I received one of their kits, uh, collection kits, uh, and I was uh, flicking through their, rec through their website, searching for my DNA uh, report so I could know from which parts of the world my DNA comes from. DNA comes from. And I noticed this one line that really was amazing for me. They also do some researches and they publish outcomes of those researchers, researches uh, in a peer reviewed academic journals. And I said just, wow, even they use peer reviews, right? They review their work. And actually this is also what we do in Swifting.io. Uh, every article we write is created on a separate branch on a Git repository before being published. Our team members assess our articles and we provide some improvements and uh, that stuff to articles. And once somebody thinks it's ready, he or she can publish uh, an article. Of course, not everyone does it. World isn't uh, ideal. Uh, so my question is, should we review? Probably not everyone in this room works on a software that on which one's life depends. Probably not everyone works on a software of an airplane. No, ev not everyone deals with uh, seven billion billions life uh, billions lines of code, and probably not. Probably no one here. Uh, works on a project that tries to send human into space, right? So why the hell should we review? I think the bottom line of this presentation is because with code reviews, we can learn from each other. Every individual in this room has different experience and we can share our ideas. We can learn from each other uh, we can teach others, we can improve our, our work, source code. And that's the bottom line, I think. And if we ever happen to work on a project on which one's life depends, we will be ready because good habits will stay with us. And if you are dreamers, just like I am, uh, maybe, and if you want to introduce such practices in your work, maybe you can do what I did once. So I started actually with a prank I did to my colleagues. Uh, I worked on, in my opinion, on an important feature uh, in one of our applications. I wanted this one to be checked, so I created my work on a separate branch. And the prank was about sending a pull request for my colleagues and I asked them to review my work. And you can do the same thing. And maybe one day uh, those code review practices will become a standard in your team, in your company, just as it was for my team. And maybe uh, one day the only argument you will have with your, in your team will be about merging source code directly to the main development branch. And just, guys, review all the things. Thanks. Oh, and by the way, this presentation was also reviewed dozens of times. Uh, so do you guys have any questions for you? Yes, please. Uh, so you set up like you need just one hour with two part of the review, right? Yeah. So basically, it took one hour, not a long time. So Basically, I think you just review the small thing. Yeah, of course, it depends ca case by case. But uh, uh, when you uh, review somebody's work, and when you work on one uh, subject, 
you probably cannot focus for more than one hour or 90 minutes at most on a certain topic. So actually this one hour is one hour per day. This is uh, what we, uh, yeah, we were spending on code reviews at the previous workplace. Uh, yeah, a bit. Actually, we were using Clang, so built-in uh, Xcode uh, static code analyzer, and we also uh, at uh, my previous company we were using uh, a thing called. Uh, okay, just forget the, the the name, but it was it w wasn't good enough. But there's actually one that you can use for your uh, open source projects on GitHub. It's called CodeBeat. And you can just, uh, I think you can link your GitHub account to CodeBeat and put uh, links to your public repositories over there. And they uh, can point out some, uh, actually, it, they, they can point out some few, uh, things that can be improved your, in your code. They provide some metrics for your code. And it's free for open source projects. They also have some uh, plans for enterprises, so you can use them in your company. So what are the kind of things you learn from the code review? Oh, there are many. Stuff. Yeah, programming stack usually. It's good when you uh, work in a team. Is uh, Probably the best thing is when you can learn from seniors their style of work. And it's also good that you can establish certain rules, certain solutions to basic problems. So uh, use the same coding style or uh, solving style, certain problems. I think those are uh, the most important things, especially at the beginning of the project. When, for example, in our previous company, uh, we tend to switch teams. So. Uh, there wasn't many times when we worked with the same people. And when you gather different people together, they have to start uh, working together, right? And it's uh, difficult f at the beginning. So to get to know each other and to uh, make up a style, right, for code. Don't kill me. Don't kill me with another question. Because last time uh, Dominic asked me a question, I didn't know. How to answer it? Play. Again. I don't know, man, maybe. So let's call it a day. Thank you very much.